Welcome to Street Science, the platform for scientific street talks. Today, I will walk you through the intricate world of virology, where the smallest things can cause the biggest of problems. We will explore the world of viruses and learn how they work and what they can do to our bodies. First, let's understand what viruses are. Think of them as small packages that are not quite alive, but inside these packages, they carry many things wrapped in a protein coat. Viruses cannot be seen with naked human eyes and are ubiquitous in nature, meaning they are everywhere. They infect every living thing, even bacteria. As a matter of fact, we have parts of viral genomes integrated into our genome. We evolved with them. You exchange millions of viruses when you kiss someone. Luckily, most viruses are harmless and do not cause diseases. Just like humans, they come in different shapes and sizes, each with its own unique form. Their genetic material is either DNA or RNA. Now here's the problem. How can something so small cause so much trouble? Viruses cannot survive on their own. They need us, humans or animals, to thrive. They are dead outside the human body but become alive once inside a cell. But how do they enter the cell? This can be through body openings or wounds in cell surfaces. Just like you enter your house through an opening like a door or a window, Viruses enter our bodies through receptors that are present on the surface of cells. They attach themselves to cells' receptors like a key fitting into a lock, and the receptor transports these viruses into cells, just like you open your door with its key. Just like each door has its key, each virus has its receptor, although some viruses share a common receptor. Once inside the cells of our bodies, they release their genetic material and take control of the cell's machinery. It's a complete hijack. The cell, unaware of what's happening, starts producing more viruses instead of performing its normal functions. This takeover can damage the cell and cause various symptoms, indicating that the virus is inflicting pain on us or is fighting against our immune system. Speaking of our immune system, it is like our body's army. When it detects trouble, it gears up for war. The fight can lead to fever, cough or runny nose, loss of appetite, showing that the body is fighting back. Viruses can spread in various ways. They can travel through the air when someone sneezes or coughs, linger on surfaces waiting to be touched, or pass from person to person through different means including sex and kissing. Some viruses can be smart and stubborn, hiding in the body without showing any symptoms but still capable of spreading. But fear not. We have ways to protect ourselves. Vaccines contain parts of or entire virus particles that have been killed, and they act as schools for our immune system teaching it how to recognize and defeat specific viruses. Think of it as, it takes a thief to catch a thief. Vaccines train our immune system to fight the actual virus when it comes in contact with it. Drugs or other medication on the other hand, simply bind to the virus or its parts and prevents it from infecting a cell or multiplying. This is synonymous to an abortion. Yes, we stop viruses from making progeny, aka babies. Simple actions like washing hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds and maintaining cleanliness, protected sex and exposed body surfaces can help stop the spread of viruses. It's important to cover our mouth and nose when sneezing or coughing and maintain social distance to avoid close contact. Virology is the key to understanding these tiny troublemakers. It helps scientists develop medicines, vaccines and strategies to keep us safe from their harm. So. Even though viruses may seem like formidable enemies, knowledge is our shield in this fight. The more we know about them, the better we can protect our bodies and our health. Thank you for stopping by. Until we meet again, this is Street Science.